Wait, wait, wait. You're telling me that Marvel is selling off the movie rights to their characters? Well, who got Spider-Man? Damn. All right, well, let's at least try and get the Hulk. I mean, the show did pretty well back in the day. Could probably turn him into a franchise. Iron who? Iron Man? Who the hell is that? One second. Yellow. Mr. Richards, there's a Mr. Ian Malcolm here to see you. Uh, Dr. Ian Malcolm, actually. And might I say, what soft hands you have, yes. <laughs> All right, send him in. Oh. <laughs> now, Janine. Oh, well, hello, Dick. Hello, hello. Good to see you. Love what you've done with the place. Oh, the decor. It's, uh, it's timeless. Uh, and this over here? I was in that film. <laughs> I don't know if you knew that. Uh, is this a, uh, is this real mahogany? That's right. Dr. Malcolm. Hi. Thanks for coming by. I want to once again congratulate you on the unprecedented success of Jurassic Park. Yeah, well, it was a, it was a team effort, but uh, of course I uh, did provide the moral compass, the, the comic relief, and uh, dare I say the much needed uh, sex appeal to the project. <laughs> yes, uh, well, we had a good feeling about the project, but it performed way beyond our wildest expectations. I mean, 900 million at the box office, highest grossing film of all time? That is nothing to sneeze at. I uh, know, I know, and uh, of course uh, your bean counters could not have possibly foreseen this uh, great fortune, but but chaos theory, however, uh, does prove that... Uh, are you familiar with my work in chaos theory, or shall I uh, dumb it down for you? Actually, as much as I'd love to hear another speech about chaos theory, the reason I brought you in was to give you the good news. We've officially greenlit the sequel to Jurassic Park. Ah, yes, uh, wow, I, uh... I, uh, well, that's, uh, probably the worst idea that I've ever heard. Uh, why would we make another one? Uh, we went in, we did our thing, uh, it was great, and now we are, uh, done. Yay, us! Uh, what would the sequel even be about? We saw the dinosaurs, ooh, uh, impressive. We ran from the dinosaurs, must go faster, must go faster. We learned a valuable lesson about respecting nature, and we got the hell out of there. Uh, everything was tied up with a nice little, uh, uh bow. Well, see, what you and the audience didn't know is there was actually a second island. And this second island is where all the dinosaur breeding originally began. And this time you'll be stopping John Hammond's evil nephew from creating another Jurassic Park. So you'll see some more dinosaurs, have a run in with a T-Rex or two, get hunted by some raptors, it'll be great. $50 million opening at least. Uh, forgive me for saying so, but um, it sounds like you're making the same movie again. Making the same movie again? Oh, oh, my poor sweet Dr. Malcolm. That couldn't be further from the truth. This one has a T-Rex running through San Diego. Yeah, but, but what's in the story that makes it unique? What's the point? What's the message? What is the raison d'etre, if you will? Oh, I see. Yes, well, the first one was a cautionary tale about respecting nature because genetic manipulation is bad. This one is a cautionary tale about respecting nature because poaching is bad. Uh -huh. Do you care to uh, elaborate further on that? Or? No. Poaching bad. Yeah, if, uh, if I may say so, uh, top to bottom, this sounds like a, a great big pile of shit. It's completely lacking in artistic integrity. You're clearly just making a sequel where none is needed. At least the first film was based on an incredible book with uh, powerful and salient messages that we then uh, elevated to a more broad and grandiose uh, platform, so to speak. Oh, well, if that's what you're worried about, we totally got it covered. We're paying Michael Crichton a literal dump truck full of money to write the sequel to the book, which will serve as a basis for the sequel to the movie. So, problem solved. Ah, no, Dick. Uh, problem not solved. Problem far from solved. Uh, there is no artistic value here. Uh, everything you've just pitched to me sounds completely uh, unnatural and uh, manufactured. Oh, Dr. Malcolm. To use a term that is totally contemporary and will never go out of style, no, duh. Obviously it's manufactured. Manufactured according to my plan. My plan to turn Jurassic Park into a transmedia super franchise. You see, Ian, there's an inherent problem with movies today. While they have been making more money than ever this past decade, there's still unfortunately a shelf life to their money-making potential. 
It comes out, you hit payday, but then six months down the road, it's out of theaters and out of the public's minds as they've moved on to the next shiny thing. Now, you may be able to extend its lifespan via multiple revenue streams like the home video market or merch, or if you're really lucky, a sequel or two, but no matter what, its time in the spotlight will eventually come to an end. But what if it didn't have to? What if instead of feeding off of the movies, these various revenue streams fed into one another, creating a perpetual feedback loop of excitement for the brand? I mean, look at Star Wars. It's been a decade since their last movie came out, and the unwashed masses are still talking about those movies because of all the books, comics, video games, and toys that have been keeping the franchise at the top of their simple minds. So much so that when the next movie eventually does come out, it's gonna be a hit regardless of quality because the fans are already clamoring for it. Hey, yes, I, uh, I, do, uh, I do like that Chewbacca character. <laughs> So yes, Jurassic Park might have been the biggest movie of all time, but I think we can do better. I think we can make Jurassic Park Universal's Star Wars. Ah, uh, talk about uh, delusions of grandeur there, Dick. Oh, it's already started, Ian. Book sales have skyrocketed thanks to the movie, which will lead to massive sales of the sequel book, which in turn will lead to exponential excitement for the next movie based on that sequel book. And for the kids, oh boy, do I have a plan for them. There will be t-shirts, lunch boxes, video games in every arcade and on every console, a ride at Universal Studios, and the toys. Oh God, the toys, they will print money. We can make a toy about any dinosaur and those idiotic little ankle biters will be begging their parents to buy it for them. It doesn't even matter if the dino was in the movie. Hell, it doesn't even matter if the dinosaur is real. They'll sell out regardless. Let me get this straight. You, you think that your toys, your dinosaur toys, are going to uh, fly off the shelves? Dinosaur toys, which children have been playing with since, uh, since well, since the dinosaurs were discovered. Uh, good luck with that, Dick. Oh, about that. I'm actually pretty proud of this one. See, we've branded all of our toys with a special JP logo, which gives off a manufactured air of exclusivity. And to reinforce that, at the end of all of our toy commercials, we're telling kids to look for the JP logo. Basically, we're telling kids that our JP branded toys are special and all the other dinosaur toys are inferior and for losers. And if you have any of those, then you're a loser too. God, we are gonna make so much money. This is, uh, this is evil. This is, uh, this is pure evil. It should be illegal to market to kids like that. It should be. But it isn't. The lack of humility that's being displayed here uh, staggers me. Uh, you're trying to manufacture a fandom uh, rather than letting it evolve naturally. You saw what Star Wars had done and, uh, and you took the next step. You didn't earn the knowledge yourself. You, you stood on the shoulders of creative geniuses and tried to create a franchise as quickly as you could. And as soon as you found success with a single film, you patented it, you packaged it, you slapped it on a plastic lunchbox, and you're, you're selling it. You're trying to sell it. You were so preoccupied with whether or not you could, you didn't stop to think if you should. Okay, Dr. Malcolm, why would I stop to think when I'm already sitting on 900 million reasons why I should? I didn't go out and print this money. People threw it at me. People wanted to watch Jurassic Park again and again and again. See, what you don't seem to realize is I'm not trying to manufacture some pop culture abomination to force on the poor innocent moviegoers. These insatiable maggots want to consume it just as much as I want to sell it to them. People crave franchises. And you know why? Safety. See, life is chaotic. It's full of surprises and disappointments, losses and failures. Everything sucks. People are terrible. Your dreams get crushed over and over again until one day you just drop dead. But then franchises come along, like lighthouses in the dark and stormy night that is human existence, and offer people an escape to better, more interesting worlds where the good guy always wins and they're safe from the harsh realities of reality. They offer a consistent, familiar entertainment, and in that familiarity lies safety. A little slice of order amidst an incomprehensible and uncaring world. Order that they will gladly pay billions and billions of dollars for, and that's a... Uh, Chaos theory. Wow, that, uh, that is certainly a cynical worldview. Uh, but don't get me wrong, as a fellow cynic and a, a disciple of chaos theory, uh, I can see where you're coming from. But I still find this whole thing uh, morally objectionable, so you're going to have to do it without me. I'm uh, out, as the children say these days. Uh, uh, does your uh, Gal Friday validate, or shall I? You know what, Ian? I admire your moxie. 
Good for you for sticking to your guns. It's a shame though. I guess we're just gonna have to find some other character to headline the movie. Uh, excuse me, headline, uh, uh, what headline? Oh, did I forget to mention that? Yeah, we're cutting all the other characters and making you the star this time. They were basically dead weight anyways, clearly standing in the way of your full potential. I mean, with just 15 minutes of screen time, you made math sexy. Imagine what you could do with an entire film. That certainly uh, changes a few things. Uh, calculating, calculating. Uh, uh, yes, uh, actually, uh, uh, Dick, uh, Mr. Richards, um, after careful consideration, I've decided that I'm on board with the untitled Jurassic Park sequel. I am glad to hear it, Doctor. <laughs> it just promised me that, uh, that the movie's going to be good. Uh, if the sequel doesn't deliver, the whole thing falls apart. Star Wars wouldn't be where it is today without Empire Strikes Back, am I right? Look, I hear you loud and clear, and don't worry, it's gonna be great. I mean, it has to be. It's not like if the movie sucks, I'll be able to magically hold on to the franchise for 20 years until it becomes nostalgic for an entire generation of moviegoers, and then release a sequel slash rehash of the first movie, preying on said nostalgia, leading to a multi-billion dollar box office, and restarting this whole process over again. I mean, there's no way that could happen, right? <laughs> 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 hey everyone, thanks for watching. We want to give a big shout out to Gods Unchained for sponsoring this video. Gods Unchained is a bold new free-to-play TCG. Created by a former Magic the Gathering director, Gods Unchained is a card game that focuses on skill over randomness. What helps sets it apart from the other online card games is that it's built on the blockchain like cryptocurrency, meaning players actually have true ownership over their cards, giving them the power to trade or sell them for real money. And for a limited time, Gods Unchained is giving $20 USD to players who complete a series of missions in the game, and an additional $5 for each person they refer who completes the missions too. So click the link in the description below if you want to give it a try, earn some money, and support our channel. And if you'd like to see another Dick Richards video, click the box on the left. Or to watch another dope video, click the box on the right. We'll see you next time. Bye.